Hi, this is Super Testnet, and today I'm going to do a demo of the new Lightning Escrow API, uh, and this will allow us to create to to use the command line and other um, applications that can do HTTP requests uh, to create contracts with people and settle them one way or another, acting as the oracle. Uh, this is meant to show that any developer can do this, and you can build Oracle and Escrow into your application and use the Lightning Network. Uh, to do that. So let's get started. Uh, the commands to follow all of this along are all on my GitHub and I'll put a link in the video description so you can follow along. First thing we're going to want to do is create a new user. So let's go and do that. This all describes how it works but here's the cool part. I'm going to go down to this sample code down here and let's get over to CodePen where I'm going to plop this into there and I'm going to create a new user called, oh I don't know, let's go with one of the presidents. Um, President Lincoln at example.com. He's going to have the awesome password of 112. We're going to pass that in as a JSON to the uh, to the endpoint, which is set user, and let's hit enter. And great, we got a success status. We, he's got a session key. He's got an, uh, a user ID, and he gets uh, an expiration date for this thing back. So he's going to use this session key throughout all subsequent qu queries that we make uh, in the course of this um, this. Uh, demonstration. So I'm going to save this, uh, and I also want to let you uh, make make you aware that this expiry right here, um, that's a two-week expiry. It, to, uh, the uh, session key I created uh, it lets you authenticate as this user, and it expires after two weeks. So if you're like a developer and you're making a website that uses this, you're probably going to want to extend the le the length of time for this session key so that it uh, lasts longer than just two weeks. This, uh, the, by default, they last two weeks because they assume you're like an ordinary user, and if you if you log out of the site or if you if you log in, you don't really need a session to last longer than that. But if you're a developer, you might want it to last longer. So I'm going to show you how to do that, uh, how to extend a session key. But first, uh, if if once you've set a user, you can also log in as that user by passing the same info, the email and password you created, but to a different endpoint. You would pass it to the you know, to the login endpoint, and then you'd get the same thing back. You'd get, you know, status success, here's your session key, and an ID number, and an expiration date uh, that's set for two weeks in the future. Uh, but let's extend that session key. So here's an endpoint we can query to make it go longer, and so I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that. Let me go back to CodePen here, paste that into there, get rid of the demo session key, and hit enter. And when I do that, it's actually going to give me back the same session key is now extended. The expiration date now lasts until, oh, this timestamp is somewhere in the year 2038. So that was a success for user 27. Great, so we just used the uh, used our key to authenticate as ourselves and make ourselves a developer, basically, by giving ourselves an extended session key. Um, great, so let's see what else we can do with this. Uh, we're going to create a transaction next. It needs a lot of data, but over here I'm just going to copy-paste and use a use the one that's in the demo API. So paste that in here. Let's go ahead and use the same session key. And we're going to get a, we're going to make a buyer email of this. So that when you're creating a transaction, we need to know the recipient's email address. Um, we don't need, it doesn't need to be a real one. If you want to protect your user's privacy, you can, you can create like a fake one. Uh, and that'll be good for their privacy. Here I'm going to use a different president. Uh, I'm going to use uh, George. Washington as the example, um, but you can you don't have to put a real email into here. If you're uh, this, it, whatever email you put in here will get a um, a message from us. It'll get a notification saying, "Hey, it's time someone wants to do a transaction with you." And then throughout the subsequent queries, it'll actually email that e that email address and say, "It's like it's time for you to pay this or whatever." But um, you don't have to put that in there. Like if you if you don't if you're you, if you're on a website where you're like doing everything and you're showing the users your own flow. Uh, you don't have to use ours, and if you want to do that, you can just put in a fake email as their uh, as their buyer email. Um, so yeah, we're gonna sell a good. We're gonna call it pizza for deeds. It's a line from a musical I like, large pepperoni with a side of snakes. The fee payer is gonna be the buyer, and he's gonna make it a five thousand sat invoice. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And when I do, I get back this status success. Great, and the data of the transaction is right here. Notably, it's got this field called payment hash, and it's got a, an ID number for this transaction. It's ID number 38 with this payment hash. We're going to want to save those two pieces of data uh, because we're going to use them throughout, uh, well, in some of our subsequent queries. Uh, the next thing we need to do, though, let's take a look, uh, is, well, we, we can actually view all user transactions, although right now 
it'll just be the one but uh, I'm not going to do those right now for this demo um, because I'm going to actually create the invo create the full transaction before I you know display it um, but we're going to create an invoice and so the user who got this payment hash needs to create a hodl invoice which will be settled when we if we as lightning escrow provide the uh, pre-image to this payment hash uh, to do that, uh, we, don't, we don't give you the command in the API that you need to use to create a HODL invoice, um, but uh, you'd have to do this in your user interface as a developer. So the command is lncli add hold invoice, uh, give it the payment hash, and then specify an amount, which will be you know this one right here. Um, so when I do that, I get this payment request back. And we're going to use that in our next command. So this is what your user would have to do. Or if you have like a macaroon for them, for their node, you could do this stuff on their behalf. Um, but yeah, uh, the next thing we're going to do now that we've created the invoice, we're going to pass it in to the uh, server so that it can create the rest of this transaction. So let's go ahead and grab all this data right here. Make sure we're using the same session key that we just used. There we go. Pop in this. Um, pop in this invoice into the uh, API and our transaction number was number 38 so let's go ahead and pass this to the endpoint set invoice there we go gives us a success and now uh, now the service knows what our invoice is which is cool and it's gonna need that because it's gonna show it later um, great next thing we need to do is set the buyer so uh, the buyer presumably is going to either log in or create an account, and he's going to do that at the same login uh, or set user uh, endpoint that uh, we would use otherwise. Uh, in this case, I'm actually not. Uh, if, if you're using this as a developer, I recommend that you you take all of your own offers, like you create a website where you where you're passing content in as the buyer and as the seller. If you do that, you only need to have one account. Uh, the API doesn't doesn't need to have a second user as the uh, as the buyer. It can be the the seller can be the buyer, and if you do that, then you'll have full control over this contract. You'll have full ability to like say, yeah, I received the product or whatever, and then it'll it'll settle. Um, so that's what I'm going to do in this case. I'm going to pass the I'm going to become the buyer, uh, but to do that, I need to send pass in the same email and password that I used before, as well as a transaction number to the login endpoint, and uh, that will allow me to take this offer. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Here's the code for it. Pass that here into CodePen. We're going to need to co return this to uh, the user we had, which was um, uh, President Lincoln. And his password, of course, was going to be 112. Transaction number is going to be 38. So let's pass that in and see what we get. Great. Uh, I am now the uh, well. It's giving me a login status and telling me my you know session ID, which I already know. But also, if I look up the date of this transaction, which I'll do now, uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. Get a single transaction. Uh, it'll show that I'm the both the buyer and the seller in this transaction, which is what I want in this case. So let me grab my uh, authentication key right there. I'm looking up transaction number 38. Let's go and get that. Oh, and a mistake happened. I believe it wants a string instead of a. There we go. So now if I look at this uh, in here, it says that the buyer's email is this, the seller's email. But the, the buyer is user number 27, and the seller is also user number 27. So the same person is both buyer and seller in this contract. And that's what I recommend as a developer, that you be both the buyer and the seller. That way you have full control over what happens in the contract, uh, except you're not taking custody of user funds during this process. You're just deciding whether this guy gets the money or this guy gets the money. Uh, great. So let's uh, keep going. So we have the invoice right here. We've got uh, all that information. Uh, let's go down and we've, so we've set the buyer. Uh, now we've got to have the buyer claim the contract is funded. Uh, so here's the code for that one. Of course, you can do this in any programming language, but here I'm demonstrating it in JavaScript. So the buyer is going to pop this in and say, uh, yep, transaction number 38 has been funded. Of course, got to make this a string. So when I do that, it changes the status, uh, saying that uh, the buyer claims this has been paid. Great, that's what we want. 
Seller's got to confirm the contract is funded. You do that by, by uh, if this is something you do in LND. I'm going to copy this command. You basically do LNCLI, um, uh, I think it's get invoice. Maybe it's invoice status. Oh, it's lookup invoice. That's what it is. Not, not get. Look up invoice there. And this gives me this whole thing. The one we're looking for is state open. So, of course, this actually hasn't actually been paid yet. Uh, the, the buyer said he paid, but it actually hasn't yet. Uh, I could pay this, you know, with my, with my mobile wallet. I could pay that invoice, which you'd have to display to your user. But in this case, I'm not going to do that because there's no reason to in a demo, in this demo anyway. Uh, I'm just going to say the, the, I'm going to claim on behalf of the seller that the contract has been funded. Normally, he would only do that if this says it's uh, in the state of accepted. Um, but yeah, the, I'm going to say the contract is funded anyway um, by running this command right here. Uh, so let's pop in my session ID and uh, this has to be number 37, not 35. Oh, no, it's 38, not 35. Notice if you if you do anything these things wrong, it'll just give you a blank message back. But here I did it right, and so it says the status of the thing is now paid, which is great, or at least the uh, the contract is now funded, and that's what we want. So uh, we as the Oracle now, or you as the person controlling our Oracle, are able to, um, as a developer, you're able to say like, okay, send the money forward or, or whatever. Um, but first we want to make sure that the goods have been sent because presumably you're doing this you're using this API because somebody's selling somebody something um, either online either a digital good or a physical good. So let's at least have the uh, seller say I sent the goods. I'll show you what happens when you when you do that. Seller says I sent the goods for transaction number 38 not 28. It's just going to change the status to goods sent. We're going to have the buyer confirm that he got them using this. And here we go. Buyer says, uh, yeah, I got those goods. All it's going to do is change the status, and it's going to say goods received, which is what we want. Seller is going to, so now that it's in the status of good, goods received, this is where the, where the Oracle gets to, gets to say, all right, the goods have been received by the buyer, so let's let the seller have his money. So I'm going to go ahead and do that using this command right here. Uh, so the seller needs to ask for the, uh, for the payment hash for transaction number 38. And here we go. Put in the right session key. He does so, and it's like, okay, this is a success. Here's your pre-image. And that's the data he needs to collect his payment. So then he will run in here, LNCLI, settle invoice, and paste. Of course, this is going to give me an error because it was never actually funded. Um, but it's going to try to settle that, and it's going to be like, hey, the invoice is still open. Of course, it needs to actually have been, somebody needs to have tried to pay it before that'll work. But yeah, that's how that's how the API works. Once you've done that, the... Uh, um, the contract goes into a funds received state, which you can see right there, and uh, it's considered closed. The um, the contract is done now, and everything's everything went well. Uh, if you if I decided not to give him the pre image, like if I ran a com if my if you as a developer say like before you can get the pre image, you have to I don't know do something like you have to there has to be something on the blockchain or whatever. You could basically go to town with this and only give them the pre image uh, if they fulfill your whatever it is you want them to do. Uh, depending on your service, and if you refuse to give them the pre-image because they don't do whatever it is they're supposed to do on your service, uh, then the buyer will eventually get his money back. His his payment will expire. Uh, his his uh, the contract the HTLC will expire, and then the funds will automatically return into the uh, buyer's wallet which is great. So this allows you as a developer to com have complete control over who gets the money in a payment uh, without taking control of user funds. A fully programmable escrow uh, at lightningescrow.io.